um, basically, um, so projection mapping is a very interesting, uh, it's a very interesting thing. Okay, so you can use basically use a projector to do kind of like so normally projector is like this. We project the screen and we use it to do a presentation. But a projector it essentially can be used as a very very big screen. So we can project on the side of building, can project the objects. And what projection mapping does is that you're able to map that projection into a certain area that you want. Okay, which so today um, what I like to do is I like to show you what projection mapping is and I also like to introduce you all to what what projection uh, how to actually get started a bit. Okay. So let me show you um, this video. This video is a is actually the video that got me interested in projection mapping. Right, about two years ago in 2015, uh, one of my friends showed me this video, and I'm very uh, basically she asked me a question: How does how did how did they actually get this done? And I was also very intrigued, like how did they actually get it done? You know, so I started to find out about this. Okay, so I'm just going to read it. How do they actually make a projector so accurately map into one area? So I did a lot of research. I look out this company, and they actually, they actually, this. If you search for this uh, Denzel and how you will find that they actually did uh, more or less uh, explain how they do it, and they actually did use the word projection mapping software. Okay, let me show you um, a few other examples. Okay, this is probably an example that you guys have seen because this is. Uh, example that happened in Singapore. So this was one of my. This was um, I can't remember highlights of night festival. Highlights festival uh, last year. Like uh, art science museum projection mapping onto art science museum itself. Right. So these uses very 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 strong projectors. Uh, so I was fascinated by this installation. But what I'm most fascinated about this part, right? So you go onto, uh, you are able to interact with the with the projection. So you select the thing and you swipe, and you will see that thing appear into the installation. Entire structure, like in this case, they map it to the uh, Ping Pong Museum. 
to the National Museum. Right. So you see, only the archway is pretty well respected. Right. I will fast for a little bit. So you see, they can even to map exactly here. So they can do all sorts of weird stuff with the building. So they still they map, so the candles are not there. But they are also map into the actual window. It looks like they are coming out of the window. And all these look like they are coming out of the window. So you can do all sorts of crazy stuff with projection mapping. Okay. So, go back to my slide. So, the first thing is that I choose a projection mapping software and the one that I use is this one called BPT7. BPT stands for projection, uh, Visual Projection Tool 7 and why I choose this? Very simple, it's free. All others you have to pay. Um, some can do really crazy things. This is quite a basic one and if let's say you want to play with it, uh, obviously this will be a good choice because you don't have to, you don't have to pay any money. Right. So one of the features okay, is it works on both Windows and Mac. Very really good point. Uh, it can support eight channels of video. That means simultaneously eight videos can play at the same time. I'll show you this later. Um, you can you can preset. That means you say that okay, when I trigger preset, this video play with this da 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 in this in whichever configuration. Uh, it supports video and alpha channel, and this is a very this is a very uh, important point. Later, Linus will talk to you about uh, videos with alpha channel. And you can do, you can you can uh, put multiply and screen to the video effect, which means that let's say you have something like a, a black background and white words, right? You can take the black background away. If you have a white background and white uh, black words, you can take a white background away. That's multiply and screen. If you guys have played Photoshop, you understand that. You can interface with an Arduino. You can interface with hardware, which I'm going to show you later on. I have a live demo for you guys. Um, that is support Siphon. Siphon is a protocol on Mac whereby you can say that, okay, I'm playing in this window, I can take, siphon out this output from here, throw it into the BBT7. So it's like, I can have something Google Chrome, and then take on Google Chrome and throw it, and then I project out. Which is a very powerful, which is a very powerful uh, feature, because uh, not always you can create a video file. Like, let's say you do something in, that is uh, totally, um, what do you call this, uh, interactive, totally uh, on the fly, right? You need some sort of a software to create that, create that image or something, and then you can siphon out that image and throw it into, um, into the BBT software. For example, it's like let's say you can, you can pull something out from Instagram, like a, a picture, and then you can throw it into the projection software, and then you can see the Instagram picture on the projector. And uh, you have the mask editor, so you can actually like let's say your video so big, you can just crop out a certain area that you want. Okay, and a whole lot of other things, there are so many features, I still have not learned everything there is in this software yet. Okay. This is the interface, you uh, basically like here you have seven, uh, eight uh, channels of video. Over here you can see that you can put a mask, uh, oh, and these are the layers. I will, later what I'll do is that I will actually demonstrate the software, you guys can always come to the front. That'll be easier. Okay, and it's very important, you can bend a video into a shape. Which means there are four corners, right? When you project that, um, you can actually bend it in. So it's like, let's say I have a... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this boot. See, now that I put this boot right in, it's not correct. But later I'll show you how we can actually bend this picture into this boot. Okay? And, uh, yeah, the feature of multiple channels is that you can play many videos. So you can have like a background, one layer, then as something happens, another layer goes on top, another layer goes on top, another layer goes on top, up to eight of it at the same time. Okay, you don't have to you don't have to like all eight start at the same time. You know, it can be like this one start, then next one start, then next one start. It can come from different sources, it can be a siphon, it can be a normal video file. And when you use alpha channel, that is very important. 
So very quickly, what a video channel with an alpha channel is, is basically, so you guys are familiar with PNG format, right? It's, a, it's actually an image file, but transparent. So it's like, take a logo, and then you have a circle, right? Then you put it on, you realize only the circle appear. Okay, so for alpha video, uh, video with alpha channel is the same thing. So you can have a transparent video, which means that only the areas that are that is actually you see, and everything else you see back, you see through to the background layer. Okay, so yeah, I know this this is prob this is not the best looking video, but this is probably the best uh, example. Okay, so you see this here, this background here, this is one video file. The fireworks, the parachute, the helicopter. The water skis, everything is one video file. Uh, all the video file by itself. So parachute with one file, the helicopter one file, the fireworks one file. And uh, okay, so I'm just going to play this. It's a big mess, but you will see that you can have parachute running. You can have the water ski at the bottom. You can see the aeroplanes flying out. You can see the the fireworks. But note that all of this is all a different video file. So over here, I have only six or seven video files that are playing in parallel, not one video file. And that is really the, that is the, the magic of this, uh, having alpha, uh, video with alpha channel. So when the, the helicopter fly, right, all the areas around the helicopter is all transparent. That's why even if I have uh, while the helicopter is flying, the fireworks appear, it doesn't matter, they won't block each other. Okay. Um, Thanks. Yeah. So then you come to the point of interactivity, which you saw in the first two videos, right? The first two videos, you can touch the wall, and then something happened. You, the second one, you from your smartphone, you swipe up, the something happened, right? Uh, the third one, there's no interactivity, but this is when it's very uh, magical because people are actually interacting with what seems to be a projected image, and that's when they get very. They, they like start to enjoy the interaction. They start to enjoy the the actual um, the actual piece that you have there. Okay, and that is possible is because you are able to create a uh, custom hardware, and this custom hardware can be fed into PPT seven. Okay, so by zero interface. So when you can create custom hardware, right, it means that you can use any kind of sensors you want. Right, it could be like maybe a light sensor when it's dark, then suddenly another projection happens. When it, you're near to it, another projection happens. When you touch it, another projection happens. It's really up to you how you want to create it. So people can interact with the, the projection in so many different ways. Up to you how you want to. Maybe the weight sensor, you when you step, then something happens. You know. Um, so. After that, after all of that, that happened and all the research that I done, then uh, last year I did my first project together with Linus and uh, another lady Agatha, and this is the interactive clock project. So let me just show you a quick video on it first. So it has interactivity that you can touch it and it plays the. It, it plays the, the, the correct animation. So of course, uh, what we do is I like, start small. Uh, I didn't want to then do a whole building first. First to do a table, small little thing. Uh, learn everything you need to learn. This was a much simpler project. Um, and it's probably was a good start for us. We took like what, one and a half months to actually make this. Okay. So um, I'd like to explain to you something. Okay, this is a little bit more technical. Uh, it's this thing called capacitive touch sensing. Okay, so how it, what it does is that, um, that this, uh, so, okay, so the previous, the previous, the previous uh, video, you saw them touching this uh, silver thing. This is actually a piece of cloth. Okay, so 
that's when it becomes very interesting to the people that how come I thought a piece of cloth I can trigger an animation. It's like this 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 cloth is actually responding to me. Right? That's when it becomes very weird for the people. So it, it, when it becomes weird and you cannot understand how it works, then it becomes magical and it, they start to under, they start to like the project even more. Okay, so capacitive start sensing is actually the same technology that is used on your smartphone screen. Okay, you're, you're touching it, that's actually capacitive start sensing. And how it actually works very, very um, simply, yeah, I'm not going to go too technical, is that there's a, there's a chip and it actually creates an electric field around something that is conductive. Okay, so anything that is conductive can become a button. Okay, so this is not normal fabric, this is conductive fabric. Right. So you can start thing as conductive fabric, you can conductive ink, there's such thing as conductive filament for 3D printer. Um, because you use metal, you can wire. You can use an apple, a banana, an orange, or all that actually will also work if you want to do that. Okay. So it, how it actually works is that um, you have a conductive material. And if you guys are interested, just uh, Google for this chip called NPR121. Uh, you can buy it from Adafruit. It comes as a it comes as a, a, a board like that and you just need to learn very basic Arduino programming and then uh, send a zero command into uh, the VPT7 software. It, is actually very, it was actually very very easy to get this done. Okay, so let me just put a little behind the scenes how it was actually put together. So first what we do is that we first had to design the tablecloth, which was what that was what Linus and his students were doing. We mounted the tablecloth onto a piece of wood, right? And then we started to hand paint part of the design. And then Okay, so over here you will see that this is the this is the base of the of the of the, the tablecloth is here, we just turn it over. So we mount an Arduino there. We mount, this is the chip that I was telling you about, the MPR121 chip. And then basically we just join one wire to this. This is conductive thread. Okay. So what we did is that it was like this. At the top, we had a piece of thread that is sewn on. This thread is actually conductive. And it goes into a piece of wire and then it goes into a circuit board. And then from here, the USB, you just plug it into the computer. And that was really all you had to do. Okay, then we have projector, project down onto the table. Okay, uh, BPT 7 software, then we start to map it into the actual uh, table. So that was my first project. Uh, my second project, which is actually now ongoing, this is a much bigger project. We went from a, I went from a table to a wall. Right, so now we're projecting up on the wall. Um, and you saw just now the, the big mess of uh, all different animation happening. Uh, that is actually this project. Okay. Uh, so we used, uh, it, we used a short show projector put on, the, put on the floor and we were able to actually project quite big. It's actually bigger than this almost like this wall like this. Um, so it has a uh, you have custom motion graphics, you mean all the motion graphics made from scratch by uh, Linus students again. Uh, we trigger but this time we did I did a bit more is that besides just touching on it, you're able to trigger from a mobile phone. Quite similar to what Team Lab did. Uh, be able to draw to an LED matrix, which is this um, thing at the bottom, but that's a different. That actually does not use the that does not use the BPT seven software. Okay, I can send a tweet to a wall. That means when I actually tweet something with a certain hashtag, it will 
here. So we use Siphon for that and we have interactive buttons on the side of the wall as well. Okay. Um, short video. This is the so we made it. It's just a website. You just go to a website, uh, you'll see that and we are actually able to do this. So light show, swipe up, you see a light show appear. So the people, the audience can actually uh, do it from their smartphone. This is the second one. So this is a button. What I use here is uh, conductive ink. And you just touch it and you can get a light show as well. This was actually very interesting. When we showed it, everyone was like very, was very curious. Why is it I can touch a piece of wood and I can, you know, like here you touch it and you see the, you see the planes appear. And you don't feel like the wood going in or, you know, you don't feel a button or anything. You're just touching, you know, but it's a piece of wood, not a piece of metal. So people get all very curious about how, actually how this works. Yeah, so it's uh, on display now um, the, from the 5th to 25th of uh, August uh, it's at the Science Centre Annex it's free of charge to go in and see uh, I can go and play with it and yeah so that is my part uh, Linus will now take over and tell you about how the animations and the motion graphics were made and after that I'll come back and I'll give you guys a demonstration you guys can all come to the front and see what's on the screen and I will give you a live step by step uh, demo of how it works okay Hi guys. So uh, Leon is covering the uh, the technical part. So uh, I'm not a technical guy. So I only take care of the aesthetics, the motion graphics. So everything that you see, the uh, the the buildings, the fireworks, uh, and the project before that, which is all the uh, flower animation, the shoe animation, it's all uh, I can done by my students. Uh, you know. uh, actually, I. I simply project manage them. It's, it's, it's not fair to say that I actually did it. Uh, so I'm just a bit behind the students. So. Uh, I'm not an easy person to convince. Uh, no. I, I Usually for this kind of project, I don't like to do stuff that... I don't like to copy other people. I don't like to do stuff that people have already done before. So, uh, the, I was, actually, maybe even Leon has forgotten about this video. Already. See if Leon actually remembers this video. This video was the... Was, this is the exact moment that Leon actually convinced me, right, to actually come on and do this project with him. <laughs> yeah, it was that Star Vista. Remember this? So it was this Agatha. Uh, so this is proof of concept that it works like. You press and okay, bam, video goes there. <laughs> uh, remember this, right? That's the show, yeah. So, okay. And then uh, now, so then we, that, that got me excited, uh, you know, because we, we look at this and it's like, okay, great, you know, we can actually uh, get an animation onto, with uh, different channels and then get it onto a, a table. You know? So uh, the first thing that we needed to do, obviously, was to come up with a design for the plot. Uh, because there, there, although this is a, although this is a, 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 a what is, how do you call this, a, a project where uh, it's just for experimenting. Uh, uh, but there, we actually had a brief uh, because Agatha actually had a brief for us because it was actually meant for what was that event again? Fashion, uh, Revolution. Fashion Revolutionary uh, Day, you know. So it was meant to drive the message of being very aware of the clothes that you're wearing, you know, uh, being a fair trade, uh, uh, making up of materials that is not harmful to the environment. So she had a brief for us. So we actually had to decipher the brief and then come up with a design. So uh, maybe I'll just. Just for the, the heck of it, you know, I'm just gonna run you guys through the, the process as well. So, design process, you know, so we, we actually laid out the whole thing. You know, we were trying to figure out should we go square, should we go circle, 
uh, we finally decided that we should go in a kind of roundish manner. You know, so this is all the initial drawings that we had you know, of how we wanted to come up with it. So this is a uh, sort of coming to life. Okay, so we wanted to we designed all the icons for it uh, individually. Uh, experimented different colors. We thought, you know, going the brown would work a little bit better. So eventually, we needed to make space as well. We even, initially, we forgot that we actually need to put the buttons. Up, you know? So initially, and finally, this is the one, the version with the button, and we were all happy with it. Okay, so. Uh, a bit of a story is that you, know, you do this kind of project, you, you always have a little bit of uh, constructive arguments here and there. You know? So the first argument I have with Leon is that Leon, because he runs a print shop, he wanted to print out the whole thing onto the tablecloth. You know? But I was like dead against it. I, I didn't want to print the whole thing because I thought like printing the whole thing will make it look very tacky. You know? This is fashion revolutionary week. You know? and so I wanted everything to be like very, very hand drawn. So instead of doing the fast, the, the quick and easiest way right, you know, of just printing it onto the cloth, I told my students, well, we are going to draw everything onto the top. <laughs> but yeah, I think you saw from the video, we actually cheated. Right? You know, we, did, we didn't exactly like, we didn't exactly like draw. So what we did was, like, with the help of Leon, we actually printed out the whole thing to the size of the table, and then we actually traced over the whole thing with the, the fabric markers. Huh? Okay. So along the way, I'm going to show you guys all the cheats that we actually did along the way. I mean, it looks difficult, but actually there's a lot of cheats that we did along the way. Uh, so this is like so we were researching and this is the kind of like the effect that we want that we want a very very ink like kind of effect okay um, so once we have figured that out you know that's the kind of effect that we want the hand painted effect uh, we went to the storyboarding phase so we got a couple of uh, got a couple of storyboards here so usually I, I would insist that we kind of bought out everything uh, ran it through Agatha because after all she's still the one who's in charge of the project wanted to make sure that she's okay with everything uh, before so we had some we had some ideas that were a little bit too quirky for her right now, but eventually uh, we uh, this is the one that you guys saw just now the one with the shoes so this is initially the frames that we drew out um, just to give you an example, so this is eventually how it looked like in the end. Of the, the, uh, so we wanted we wanted it to look like this in the end. Mm. Um, okay, so I'm gonna show you guys some some cheap quotes that you can actually do with this. Okay, so if you have never done hand drawn animation before, you know, how many of you here have done like hand drawn animation? Before? Hand drawn animation. So how do you control this? How do you know control the speed of how fast things are moving? Yeah, number of frames per second, right? Yeah, it's true, you know. So with the more number of frames per second, things will move slower. Uh, with the uh, less number of frames per second, things will move faster. Okay. But even with that said, right, you know, it's also still being controlled by the number of frames per second that your video is going by. Generally, when we do things like this, we try not to kill ourselves. You know, we don't do like 25 frames per second or 24 frames per second. That's gonna be nuts. Uh, we try to go as low as. 10 frames per second, that's kind of how we're going. Okay, but generally if you go with 10 frames per second, it's also quite difficult to gauge how fast you want an object to move from point A to point B. Okay, uh, let's say for example, uh, this one here. You know, we, we don't really, this is a, a, what we call a guide animation that we do. Okay, so you can see that it doesn't look anything at all like the final product. And that's because this was actually done in a computer software called After Effects, which I will show you in a while. Okay, uh, this is this is the one that you saw just now. Okay, so you can see that it's not hand drawn. You know, this is all computer generated. Okay, so what we did was we actually drew everything out in Photoshop or Illustrator. We actually did it in Illustrator, I think. So you can see all the Illustrator files here. Uh, so Illustrator is this vector drawing software. Okay, it just makes your life a lot easier with drawing in the vector. And I have this project open up in After Effects right here. Okay, so what we did was we actually animated the whole thing based on the speed that we wanted to go. Now you can see that actually this is not really cutting away the shots because there's really no need for us to cut away the shots at the moment. Uh, eventually, what we can do is we can actually hide the hands, and all we want to do is just to get a gauge of how fast the grinder should be spinning and the grinder should be moving. Okay, with that done, okay, this is so this is a cheat step number one. Okay, we, we use uh, software and illustration to help us get a sense of the speed of how fast we want to move. Okay, and then uh, the next thing that we did 
was we put the whole thing into Photoshop. Okay, so I'm gonna jump over to Photoshop. Whoa. Okay, now I'm gonna have a lot of problem with space because this one has a lot of layers. <laughs> so uh, I I don't want to just now when I open up 42 layers, we actually slowed down the computer a lot. So I'm just gonna open up 10 layers now. Um, so what we have here is I'm just gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom so you can actually see this is the video file that was that we created. Okay, so I'm just gonna solo this. Here. So you can see that this is the frame by frame animation that we did. One, two, three. So you can see that these are all vectors. Uh, they are not hand drawn. Okay, so these are not hand drawn yet. But we did this right so that we get a sense of the of the speed in which we want these arrows to move. Okay. So after that, what did we do? Well, we are very good at tracing, right? So we trace. Okay. You can see all over here, right, on the top here, these are all single layers, okay? So, what we did was, we trace over. Now, if I were to hide this this uh, video layer now, right, you can actually see that these are all painted over. This this particular arrow here now, right, I'm just zooming here a little bit more. It's now different from the actual arrow. So this is the, this is the, uh, this is the arrow that we drew, you can see that it has a lot, it's not so perfect, you know, it's, it's painted on, so it's got some holes in it, it's got some imperfections, you can see this arrow also is, is painted on, it's imperfect. As compared to the original one, you know, the one that we did, you can see that this one here, right, is actually a vector, over here, okay. So, you can say that, well, small difference, you know, but actually when the whole thing moves, right, you can see that actually the imperfection actually makes a lot of difference. Uh, so, I'm just going to hide this for a while, so you can see that, when you trace it frame by frame, right? So all we have to do is, okay, arrow move here, we simply trace over it. Then arrow move over here, we simply trace over it. Uh, this one is layer number four. Let me just uh, put layer number four to show you layer number four. So this is, oops, not layer number four. Layer number three, maybe layer number five. Uh, I seem to get this particular layer. Maybe layer number six. I don't know, layer number six, okay? So you can see that even though we had the guide animation, but it's still a lot of work. You know, we've got to go through every single frame and we have to repetitively, I think that by the time the, the guy's name was John, John was done with this, like, he got so sick of drawing arrows and, and, and shoes, just like drawing the same shoe over and over again and drawing the same arrow over and over again. <laughs> okay, so after that, what do we do? Okay, so let me show you the trick, okay? So uh, this is a nice little trick that I like in Photoshop that you, after when you have all the layers that you're done, Okay, you simply select all your layers over here. You go to File, you go to Export. I don't know if you guys have used this before, but you can actually export all your layers to files. So you don't have to go and solo every single thing and then export every single thing. You can just export all your layers to files. So all the selected layers, well now, you can export it as a PSD file. Now this is the point where I need to start talking about alpha channels, okay? Um, now you can see here, right, that if I would just solo any one of these uh, arrow, I think this is arrow number six now. If I just solo this arrow here, around here, right, it's all transparency. Okay, it's all transparent. So if I don't export with any kind of alpha channel, right, you will this will be replaced by a background color and usually black, and that's not what I want. Okay, so where picture files are concerned, you know, I mean, it's, I we see a fairly intelligent audience here, so. Anybody knows any kind of a picture file format that can actually carry transparency inside? Sorry? Okay, PNG. But PNG is only one of them. You know, there, there are actually a, quite a few formats that can actually carry uh, a transparency inside there. Okay. Um, anybody knows any, any other formats? <laughs> Yeah, uh, GIF, okay. Uh, GIF, uh, GIF can carry uh, transparency. Uh, even, in fact, you can even export it as a Photoshop file if you want to, right? Uh, other formats that are available will be TIFF, uh, Paga files, TJ files. These are all file formats that can uh, carry alpha channels. So if you export and you export uh, layers of files, you can choose here, you can see here, right? You can choose what kind of a file type you want to export to. So, BMP out, 
JPEG out, uh, PDF uh, sorry, uh, out, PSD possible, Aga possible, TIFF possible. Now PNG, that's PNG 8 and PNG 24. 24 is the one that gives you the alpha channel, so we can go with the PNG 24. So what we did was we actually went with the PNG 24 and then we run. And I'm not going to run it up because it's going to take quite a while. So I'm going to show you the end result of it, what we actually got out of it. Okay. So this is the way we cheated and we ended up with a whole bunch of PNG sequence. Okay. Let me just that off. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. Uh, what you saw just now was just like I isolated 24, but actually that's a lot. It's like we have 50 over. Okay. So now obviously these needed to be there uh, because these otherwise the icons will disappear. But you can see that what's moving is the arrow. So with the help of the guide animation, we do this. But you can see that there are some additional stuff that originally weren't there. You know, anybody notice that the original the, the the additional stuff that we added that were not originally in the AV file. You see the thing is you want to make it kind of more hand painted, more organic kind of look right. So originally if you look at the um, the uh, what do you call it? The, uh, the guy animation and the guy animation is really okay. the guy animation is over here. What's my guy animation? Yeah there we go. This is the guy animation. You'll notice that there are no lines at all whatsoever. And then if you can look at this one here, we actually added the lines, you know, um, to kind of illustrate the movement. Here we go. See the movement there? We added the lines to it. So when you're doing the animation, now feel free to add these kind of animation, you know, the, the uh, 12 principles of animation, staging, you know. Uh, and you can also afford to bend the shoes a little bit more because using the guy animation, your shoe is just pretty much just stiff, right? But when you walk, your, your, your toes bend, you know. So you have the liberty to kind of move and change your shoes a little bit more. Now don't don't paint everything exactly because if you paint exactly the way it is, then it's just become another computer generated animation. You know? So take some liberty to change and if things are not moving, there are some points where let's say here, between here and here right now, the, the shoes are not supposed they're supposed to be stationary. Uh, the the one thing that we learned right is that it actually looks better if you draw the frame slightly different. So that there's always a little bit of wiggling, a little bit of wobbling there. That imperfection is actually important for hand-drawn animation. You know? Instead of we could have drawn the two frames exactly the same, you know, but you know it's these little stuff you know that makes traditional animation a lot more fun. Okay, after staying still, you see that the shoes are actually wiggling a little bit, even though they are not exactly the same for each single frame. And then it flies back, and then it comes back here. So, okay. So uh, each one of these is quite time consuming. It probably takes us a few days to uh, get one, to knock one of these out. Uh, and then now we go to the final stage, which is assembly. Okay. So we got this whole PNG sequence. How are we going to assemble the whole thing into a video? That we have to go to After Effects again. Okay. We're just going to start a new project. So this whole PNG sequence that we have over here. Uh, we need to move all this into After Effects. Uh, this After Effects is a compositing software. Uh, I think that in the video that um, uh, Leon was showing just now, uh, with the guys that did this, I saw them using After Effects as well. So this is pretty much the go-to software if you need to kind of compile these kind of animations. So I'm on import, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the, uh, any one of them, and I'm going to import it as a PNG sequence. Okay. So, I'm going to show you the difference uh, between the PNG sequence and a regular JPEG file a little bit later. So, I'm going to select the first one. Make sure it's in a sequence that import. Okay. Now, when you import this, by default, you can see that it's on 30 frames per second. And that's going to be a problem because if when we did this on 10 frames per second. So, this is going to move a lot faster uh, than what was originally planned. But I'm just going to double click on this to show you guys the difference. Okay. So you can see that if I import this without any kind of transparency, right, it's gonna look something like that. It's gonna be like all black. Because it's kind of like brown on black right now. Oh, uh, by the way, one serious and terrible mistake that we made, I think Leon will probably give me a hard time for this, that I was the one who decided that it should be brown and not black. Okay. So we thought that you know, brown kind of looks nicer on the tablecloth and the table. We were testing this like it looks great. When we went there, it was not quite as dark as we anticipated it to be, and the contrast became a huge issue. So if you guys ever do this, just use black. Okay, don't don't get too fancy. 
Okay, so you can see I got my brown or black, and then, uh, and then where's my ah? There we go. I'm gonna turn on my transparency, and you can see that now all the PNG files these are all just transparent, so that you can have uh, multiple channels going across each other. Okay, uh, but we haven't solved the problem of the 30 frames per second. Okay, so what you do need to do is you need to interpret this footage uh, as not as 30 frames per second, but as 10 frames per second. Oh, I have the whole, uh, I cannot reach the bottom thing <laughs> problem. <laughs> uh, let's press and does it get oh, oh, can. Okay, great. <laughs> right, so now this has been swapped to 10 frames per second, and we can now drop this inside the new. Okay, let me just hide this. So we got the whole thing out now. Okay, now uh, because this is a square, we actually didn't do it as quite high resolution. We did it as 1080 by 1080. Yeah. Okay. So if we put it on a regular TV, you just have like maybe pillars on the left and the right. Um, okay, so the important thing here is um, actually what Leon really wanted me to do with this whole uh, project is we know how to export pictures with transparency. That's quite, uh, those people who used Photoshop before probably know how to do that. But how do you export video with transparency? Okay, that is the, because in order for this to work, with the tablecloth, you can see the fireworks that, that the heat it needs to have transparency. Otherwise, things will just kind of overlap each other with like black boxes, right? So, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you guys how to export this uh, with transparency, okay? So, to export this, uh, I'm just going to go to composition uh, and add to render key, okay? Um, now, it's I don't want to go through the steps because it's like it's software dependent. Uh, After Effects uses one method, you know, Premiere will be probably a different method for it, and non Adobe software will probably have a different method for it. But what is important is uh, to know what are the things to look out for, okay, so that you can go through all the settings and make sure they're all, all right, okay. So, um, the first thing that I want, okay, for format, obviously we're not going to use ADI. Okay. Um, there are two. There is only. We're gonna go with QuickTime, okay? Because QuickTime now, QuickTime. If uh, you don't be mistaken, QuickTime is not actually a codec. Co co uh, QuickTime is actually just a wrapper that contains another codec within, just like AVI. AVI is actually just a file format, like QuickTime. Okay. So when you go into QuickTime, right, you have to go ahead and choose your codec, your format or change. And this is where it happens. Okay. For example, right, if we go with a regular uh, output like let's say uh, H264, you know, which is uh, we are quite familiar with H264, right? So, like one of the most common codecs that we use now. Uh, the problem that we have with this right is that if I come out here and if I look under my channels, okay, we want we want alpha channel, right? If I click here, you can see that I have the option of RGB. I have the option of alpha, but I don't have the option of RGB plus alpha. Which is the reason for that is because H.264 doesn't allow you to export your movie file with alpha channel inside. You can either you can export it with black background or you can export the alpha channel with black and white as a black and white. But it doesn't allow you to do both. Okay. So we're gonna jump back inside here again and look at the huge list of video codecs that we have inside here. So we have. Um, Anyone wants to wants to guess <laughs> which, which ones here? That's actually quite a long list. Uh, that's actually uh, all the way down. Okay, not much longer here. Okay. I think there's one that probably will jump out quite. Uh, uh, there's PNG, right? There is a PNG option over here. Uh, this PNG codec is actually quite new. It only came out in the last few years. Uh, to have a PNG version of this. So if I choose PNG, right, you will see that now. <coughs> We have a RGB plus alpha channel version that comes up here. Okay, so that is one possibility. Okay, there is also another one that you can use. Okay, and that's my. This one will give you a slightly higher quality. PNG is slightly more compressed, but if you need it to be slightly higher quality, you can give go with this thing called animation. Okay, the animation codec is one of the most powerful codecs around. It has good quality, and it also allows you to have alpha channel as well. Okay, so. Basically, where video 
formats are concerned, these are pretty much the only two that can go with uh, animation codec or PNG codec. Okay. So maybe what we'll do is uh, we'll just do one of these animation codecs. Okay. I'll just render it out to the desktop so we can actually see. Okay, so how do you know that the video that you have just created actually has alpha channel? So this, this is the one. So if I play it back normally, you can see that it's a gray background or white background. Okay, so if you want to prove that it actually has transparency in it, you need to move it back in here. And then, well, the first thing that you will see that you will say, you will say millions of colors plus multiplied. This is the, a, a sign that tells you that it actually has transparency on it. If you want further proof, well, just, oh, actually you don't need to, just double click on it. You can see that if the alpha channel is turned on, you can actually see the alpha channel. Okay. So, we have a whole bunch of this done. Okay. Uh, let me just show you guys the final uh, design with table. So, we did a whole bunch of this. And since we have it, and, uh, and this is actually with the whole design of the table. This is the fair trade one that we did. So you can see all hand drawn, very, very organic looking. There we have the low pencil. This is my favorite one. Uh, this is organic. So this is going to be on display again, since I got the one. Okay. Um, I write the first of October. Yeah. I write. So if you guys want to play with this on the first of October, you can you'll be up again, and then you guys can go play with this. And this is a uh, second hand. Swap. I think you guys have seen it before. This is the one, the final playback. And then the last one is upside down. Which is actually the first one that we did. Okay, so uh, let me see. Yeah, so this is a uh, yeah, I think this this was the one that we sent out on Facebook. I think when we first first sent out this video, it kind of went a little bit viral. Like a lot of people that we didn't know about that actually they started commenting on it. Okay, and finally the people who were involved in this project, you know, all this one for yeah, I guess that's the one that we sent out. Okay, so we maybe what we can do is uh, I know, I know it, it, there's a lot of software involved, but I'm happy to take questions. Any questions for me or Leon? I'm really happy to take questions now. The whole process, whether it's the design process or the tech process. <coughs> uh, how much do we spend on this? Uh? How much do you spend on the wood? I know how much you spend on the pen. I think we spend very about less than hundred. Yeah, less than less than dollars. Mm. Like the, I like my, only my part is only the pens, and they cost like less than ten dollars for to buy four pens. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, that's why I just came out. Usually if it's like tech issues, uh, whatever he says, I'll just say yes. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. So, so to make to do this kind of project, you actually need uh, multiple disciplines. So I can't do it alone. I need someone like Linus to do it with me. Um, because I can't get the animation done. And he can't get the tech done. So it's like you, you, you just need a marrying of these two uh, sites to actually work together in order to get something like this done. Yeah. Well, I suppose you needed a project like this to convince people association to give you the money to do something for you. <laughs> yeah, so you start small, or then you, you know, then you have the proof of concept to ask for money. Do you just want to collect or money? Yeah. Well, how about the, uh, the, the software to do the Because what I'm going to try and do with you this projector is do the mapping. Uh, so, Kimmy, okay, you are going to have to use that. I'll capture the like, uh, You want to be able to capture my screen? I'll capture the old block. I'm not sure what will happen because I have to turn off mirroring. Okay, get the mirroring. Okay, um, we'll see how it goes. when you actually um, I'm not sure if on Windows whether do you have to actually install it but on Mac you actually don't install it you just download you open up you unzip it and then you have this folder and then you run it from this folder okay uh, what you do with that first I just I'll need your help later with this okay so uh, what you do first is that um, you, you take off screen mirroring you should not mirror your screen. Okay, so this and that is not the same. And then when you start VPT7, you have a dot app file on. Uh, you uh, the you do at the angle, hmm? and then that's what can capture Okay. <laughs> okay. So you see what happens there. Bye -bye. This is the preview screen. You see that that is the output screen, and immediately it just automatically jumps there. Okay. If I were to put now, I click here, there's this small little button that takes full screen. What will happen is that it will go full screen there. Do you have to import the file? Yeah, you have to import the file. So, uh, yeah, so what you do is that you actually. Um, Shit, this way. Okay, so I'm going to go for a bit from the. So let's say we do another. Uh, let's do something a little bit different. Okay, so let's say now let's go back to this directory. Do the default project. Uh, let me just take the current one. Okay, so let's say I have so the videos in this in this folder. Okay, a uh, few videos are basically the the one that I have with the other project. So what you do is that you actually just take this video file and this video and you just drag it to here. And this folder will be inside this layer. Okay, so there are eight layers here. So I can choose like maybe two. Okay. Turn it on. And so now this is the second layer, but what we have to do is we have to map uh, a layer to this video source. This is actually the source, it's actually the layer. So now if I were to press uh, add another layer here, and I choose it to video number two, that will be actually on here. So what you have to do 
So this is the Arduino serial port. Do you guys know about Arduinos? <coughs> okay. So basically, then I click on listen. So I like this. So that map to, so you see that changes to number two. This map to number one, so it changes to number one. So you're doing a quick just one click over there? Yeah, it, says, it, it sends a serial command to say activate preset number one. Can the presets be activated uh, simultaneously? So like one and two at the same time? Uh, yeah. Uh, can, so it doesn't need to be in different channels or whatnot? No, no, the preset is just a setting of what you have here. Oh, okay. So it means if I click 1 and 2, it will just go play and set that? It will... Preset... You must make sure preset 1 does not override something that is okay. set in preset 2. Okay. Ah. Bye bye! Yeah, so... So that's how you can actually... So, this is conductive fabric. You can do conductive ink, you can use... Where do you get this conductive fabric? Uh, you can buy it online. You can buy it from either food, you can buy it from... Uh, in Singapore, you can buy it from SG Botics. Mm, SG. SG Botics. Uh, it's a online retailer. Can, uh, can get it. And you suppose this can do also a live video? Okay. Yeah. Um, yes, so let me show you Siphon. I should have turned that on first. So, um, so you have to on siphon before you put the DVD server. So this is so that this software uh this is only available on the Mac so far. Uh siphon. So there's a lot of things that have siphon interface. Uh siphoner is just an app that actually takes allows you to choose any one of these uh, any one of these uh, windows and actually broadcast it into DVD server. So let me show you So this is Google Chrome, okay, uh, and what we can do is we can siphon anything that you are actually going to open the window. So you can somehow get the, so in this case Google Chrome is like this one. This one. Uh, Google Chrome. Yeah, Google Chrome. Um, this siphoner is free. And then over here, we can say we add another layer and at the bottom we can put a special siphon. So you can see it there. But what we can do is, like I said just now, you can do uh, multiply and uh, So if you multiply it, and then so you can animate. If you refresh, you can animate based on what you want. So you add this interactive. Oh, yeah, it can all work together. So that's why you can get stuff from here. You can anytime you want to. This will still work. At least I tap, something happens. Right. So for for my interactive wall project, how we actually put these two together is that you tap, you can actually have the animation happening, and then you tweet, and then the 
the tweet will appear on the top of the screen. So what happens if you put everything together? We will all play together. And it'll be one big mess. <laughs> yeah, it's right. yeah. So your animation has to make sure that they don't mm -hmm. they don't kill each other. Yeah, so basically that's how it works. Anyone has any questions? Why do you pre-render the other icons instead of having eight distinct videos? Unless they're based on Okay. For the for the first for the first one actually we had that problem that we did not we only discovered the alpha very late. So we had already done all that. That's why the, the link project was there was there wasn't like fireworks with all the other mm -hmm. things together. Yeah. You can you can actually do it to think like this. Actually we tried the first time we tried it didn't work for some reason. Uh, I don't know why it didn't there's a button here that I didn't click for. <laughs> <laughs> There is, <laughs> there is this thing that is uh so if let's say now I okay for some okay, this should be found so if I add another one okay, number four
So technically you can cheat right now. One of the screens you do it on the website, let's say on the flash, and then you can have multiple instances. It's still possible on the Yes. Yeah, so we switch the video because for the for the table project is one at a time. So you do you don't allow the second video to play. First, the thing is, this program, uh, the VPL, the uh, VPT7, is actually can. You can use one video and, or even like certain shapes you want, can actually impose on it. But main problem is the um, structural and, and what do you call it? We call it uh, in, in line to, to the video. It's more, more difficult. 
Yeah. Yeah, the green and thing is a lot. Yeah, and, and I think the interesting part is that you all actually did the conductive. So I think this is where, which I actually more interested. Uh, yeah. yeah. Which I think yeah, that's fun. Yeah, correct. Mm-hmm. But I think I'm not too sure because the thing is right when they, when they are running through Arduino. So is it the programming is done through Arduino first before you actually attach the program or Yeah yeah, so the Arduino is actually what it's doing, it just so That means um, you wrote the program of like for example uh, the cloth runs to the Arduino, then the program is run at, 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 with a touch, let's say a point of zero, let's say one one is on now. Mm-hmm. So you touch on one, then the, this thing will activate. Uh, this thing will send a, uh, a signal to a signal to here that says uh, activate one. So if you uh, actually okay. go so to you this, program this thing yeah. yeah. So that is the the, the difficult thing that yeah. yeah that is. So you, you use to program this thing? Because Arduino yeah. comes with a program by itself. Oh. Yeah, so, so you have to get the thing, then you to program it through Arduino. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's not automatic. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's also for, it's a lot of different ways you do it. Like mm. for this guy, we do it through like the clock, right? We do it through a preset. Uh, for the for the interactive wall, it's different. The interactive wall, we are choosing a video. Mm. Yeah, because interactive wall, we are saying, okay, switch to this video and play. Mm. Okay. Uh, so uh, if you, I'll show you the very uh, technical and scary part for you guys, which is uh, if you go under DPT seven, there is. Uh, so of course, obviously they come up with a documentation file, lah, okay, which is the basically uh, instruction manual, kind of. So they teach you the interface. Okay, the thing that you can look at is right at the bottom here, which is uh, sending OSC messages from VPT to the outside. So OSC is a protocol, it's something like, it's actually the, the better version of MIDI. Uh. You guys know about MIDI interface, yeah. Mm-hmm. So you can uh, well, they actually did give you the Arduino uh, code that works. Uh, so actually, I just copied from there and change it a little bit. So it can also do the same thing that the VPT can send to the Arduino, okay. and you can do like something happen. And, uh, but you have this very very long and. Yes, which is this is the this is the software lah. So you can uh, so you actually just need to like say you want to fade level from three to two point five, you just slash layer three layer slash fade dot point five, and you just send this as a serial command in. If you know serial uh, Arduino programming, you just put serial dot green line. It's actually not difficult if you uh, the code for the interactive table clock is not even fifty lines. It's very very short. That is prior to having the knowledge to how to. Uh, <laughs> so it's, you don't have to write very, very good. Yeah, like, but of course, I think what I understand from Arduino is that there are a lot of uh, available books online also. So you can actually just do the copy and mm-hmm. paste inside. So that's why, it, it, that's why it, it takes two different, correct, 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 different correct. kind of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like Linus wouldn't know how to do that whole portion, you see. I don't know how to do Linus portion. Also. Yeah. So it's like we just need to meet in the center and understand like mm-hmm. how, we, uh, how to do. Uh, like you have to do this or. Then, like for example, the button, he totally forgot about the buttons. <laughs> They're like, where's the button? They're like, they like, oh yes, that buttons. <laughs> no, that kind of thing. So you have to like, sort of like... Uh, oh, the phone, you know, the mobile phone. Yeah, correct. Yeah, no. That means you're using the... The, the tweet or even the... Oh, that was very complicated. <laughs> that one is actually true. Uh, uh, that one you have a server on the web, and then you have a server inside, and then there is a, a, link, a link that you have to create. Because so you need Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah. So you need Wi-Fi. First, you need stable Wi-Fi, and then after that, uh, the server from here has to, come, has to link up to the server on the web. Because you cannot, it has to be this guy go out. The guy cannot come and find you. And then after that, when you send it to the guy, the guy sends it back down. And uh, that one is more complicated. Right? So that was also that's why after doing the first one, then the second one, you say, okay, that's our problem. Well, let's see whether we can do this or not. Because I was always intrigued with the, yeah. the handphone thing and with the handphone thing is now it's like basically I can take that one, I can project from the side of the building, everybody stand ten meters away and then mm-hmm. play with it. But so the one at Microfair is in an indoor space so it's easier to manage, right? Yeah, the, the, the library is like closing. Oh, outside that one is crazy. Outside that one. Tomorrow, library, but it's yeah. like, it's so 
Let's say for even a square cube, right? We actually use more than three to five, just to project the mapping from different videos in. Yeah, that's, the, that's the thing we do now. But actually, to some extent, it's just for single project. The uh, one project that using the wiki, the wiki key is actually good enough. So the thing for you, you need another like sort of like mixer. Thing. Yes, correct. Right. Right. We actually have a uh, media server uh, that actually can combine everything or play everything accordingly. Yeah. So that's. But that one is under my tiny because I also like. They want you to need more at 11 Yeah, they want definitely more. <laughs> the projector alone almost crazy. Yeah. So I'm uh, lucky that Sony uh, actually uh, agreed to lend me the projector uh, thanks to Linus. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of discounts for the things. Yeah. One projector first, but in the end. I mean, for me, it's like I'm, more, I'm more on the technical side, so it's like the, all this is actually quite easy for me. Yeah. So uh, I'm on this side. But in terms of locally, you want to get the Arduino, that means you're using through the SG Vortex. Uh, you get SG Vortex, there is another one. What's the other one? Element Vortex. SG Vortex. Element Vortex. Yeah. Okay, Element Vortex. Element Vortex don't sell this kind of one. You get Element is all components. 12 gigs. Yeah. Uh, 12 gigs. And more after I actually got it, I can't remember what I did. <laughs> yeah, there are only three, three main retailers for this kind of product. Elements 14 is yeah. it's more of the components, cable, everything. It's very, very low level. They won't sell, they won't sell you box, mm. uh, like uh, that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to get the starter pack for all the I just want to say one or you can buy from Jockey. Uh, you buy from my friend Jockey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being recorded, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have to answer now. You need to keep up. So you can just go to uh, 12 gigs. I know 12 gigs does not sell uh, conductive fabric. They sell conductive ink, but not conductive fabric. So conductive fabric, yours, you got it from Adafruit? I think it's Adafruit. I think that time we bought, I bought together with uh, Amy. Yeah, so... Uh, Adreno, Adreno. This is a much smaller Arduino. This is the